God who gives birth to the world, who gives us breath. Fill us with your light and help us to usher in your reign of love, justice, and peace here on earth. Tune us to the harmony of the heavens. Teach us to sing your name. Be with us now as we bow in worship and humility. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our teacher and our Lord. Amen. Our opening hymn is hymn 875 from Voices United. Praise to God, your praises show. I invite you to join with me our call to worship. Move among us, Spirit, and gather us together with you. Take our many selves, our lives, our loves, our ideas, our questions, our speech, our silence, and unite us as your people. Give us the gifts of perception and understanding so that even as we dream your dreams and see your visions, we may be able to witness to your presence in our common life. Amen. I would like to welcome you to this service of worship at Knox Metropolitan United Church on this beautiful summer Sunday morning. 
Reverend Cam Fraser is away at the moment. I will be leading the service today in his place. My name is Charlene McGowan. I'm a member of this congregation. Today, we would like to thank especially Serena LaPasta and Matthew Dippel for their gifts of music, and Matthew will be reading our scriptures today. As we continue on in our service now, I invite you to join with me once again in prayer for centering and confession. Shepherd of our soul, we come to you with humble hearts asking forgiveness for our sins and shortcomings. We confess that we have turned away from you and followed the ways of the world. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not treated them as we would like to be treated. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray, and restore us to perfect union with your will and purpose. By your Spirit, empower us to render our offerings of time, service, and devotion from the sincerity of our hearts. We pray in the name you have set above all names, Jesus our Christ. Amen. We rejoice in the good news that God sent Jesus into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. For words, and God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to His purpose. For those whom He foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. 
What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depths, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Our responsive reading is Psalm 125, page 849 in Voices United. We will read responsively with everyone joining in the parts written for all and singing the refrain. who trust in God are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved but abides forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so God, you surround your people now and forever. The scepter of the wicked shall not rest on the land assigned to the just, lest the just should put out their hand to do evil. Do good, O God, to those who are good, to those who are upright in heart. As for those who turn aside into crooked ways, our God shall lead them away with evildoers, but peace shall be upon Israel. Our reading from the Gospel is from Matthew 13, 31 to 33, 44 to 52. It is five parables, mustard seed, yeast, treasure, pearls, and net. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air may come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven 
is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood this? They answered, Yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. We respond to scripture. May God's blessing be upon these and all words spoken and pondered here today. Amen. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love thee to the depth and breadth and height my soul can reach when feeling out of sight for the ends of being an ideal grace. You all recognize these words penned by Elizabeth Barrett Browning, perhaps some of the most beautiful words ever written in English. And yet, do these words even come close to matching the love you have for your spouse or children or grandchildren? For those whom we love, we are happy when they are happy, sad when they are sad. There is nothing so great that we wouldn't do for them in the name of love. And when we lose someone we love, the ache of our grief is measured only 
with the amount of love we shared. Love has no depth, but if it did, how would we measure it? Shakespeare wrote about love eloquently too when he wrote this sonnet. Let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments. Love is not love which alters when it alteration finds or bends with the remover to remove. Oh no, it is an ever fixed mark that looks on tempests and is never shaken. Love's not time's fool. Love alters not with his brief hours and weeks, but bears it out even to the edge of doom. So do these words do it? Do these words fully explain love as we know it? Or is giving and receiving of love an even deeper experience, one that we can neither fully see nor fully measure? Just how do you measure the depth of love? There is a saying that the depth of love is as unfathomable as the depth of the sea or the voyage beyond the stars, truly too magnificent and awesome for us to put into words. So many throughout the centuries have tried to find the right words to describe love and interestingly, it is exactly what Paul is doing in our reading from Romans. He is trying to explain to us the love of God. Paul himself acknowledges that it is too deep for words. Only God can reveal it to us through spirit and truth. The bottom line for Paul is that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing at all. Nothing that God has created nor anything that we can imagine real or unreal for his love for us is in fact so great that it is inseparable he says for i am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. I can only imagine how this scripture has held up people throughout the ages who have been either persecuted or have had the threat of death at the hands of another. But this scripture does not stand in isolation for it repeats a constant theme that runs in the Holy Scriptures. For example, Psalm 118 says, The Lord is on my side, I will not fear. What can man do to me? 1 Kings 8 says, May the Lord our God be with us. May he never leave us nor forsake us. Isaiah 41 verse 10 says, so do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen and I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And earlier in the reading from Romans, we hear repeated, is God, if God is for us, who is against us? Paul himself speaks from the experience of having been imprisoned and being in despair. He speaks as one who has been literally thrown out of town. He speaks as one who has been shipwrecked. He speaks as one who has seen tragedy in its many forms. Perhaps the greatest passage to describe God's inseparable love for us is written in John chapter 3 verse 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life God's deepest love is made manifest through his son who teaches us that the love shown to us 
should underpin our love for each other. The scripture in Ephesians chapter 4 reminds us, be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ has also forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children. In fact, the Bible is filled with discussions and examples of love. Perhaps the most eloquent is found at 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the passage often read at weddings. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Even in our greatest challenges, in the wildernesses of our loneliness and isolation, ill health and bereavement, God will not abandon us. His love, as given through his Son, is so extreme, so inseparable, that we are never truly alone. The depth of God's love is as unfathomable as the sea, and it is, without a doubt, inseparable through our Savior in Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, as we are able together May we respond with the words of a new creed. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God.
Now I invite you to join with me by offering our prayers for our community. We'll first start with a moment of silence for ourselves, the people we love, our community, and indeed the world. God of forgiveness and God of love, we approach you with hearts humbled by the lessons from your word. Help us to watch our speech and conduct. Inspire us to draw close to those different from us and continue to move us to forgive even the most troubling trespasses against us. O oh God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We are thankful for this summer day and for the opportunity to worship together in peace. We pray for those who are ill or lonely, and we hold those who are unable to be with us in our hearts. O oh God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we go our separate ways, help us to raise our voices with messages of faith, hope, and love. We pray these things and all things in the name of your Son, our Savior. Amen. And now, as a child turns to her mother, so may we turn to God and say together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn 314, Come Now, Almighty King.
Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.